Hello there. Good day. Hi everyone. Welcome to all the films we judged before. I'm Katie. That's Lily K. What else is new? <laughs> Season two of The Legend of Box Machina just ended. I will start and by saying um, I think they stepped it up like four times in this season. I'm very thrilled about all of it. The animation is so fucking pretty. <laughs> it's it's much prettier than it was in the first season. Like, you know, like it's the small things. Mm. And I, I like the colors more. I, I think they sharpened up a lot of things in it. And it was like... Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. It is. We're reaching points now because they're going through so much stuff so quickly. Where mm -hmm. I am, there's a part of me that very much wishes that like every episode had maybe like ten minutes more on the end of it. I'm aware that that would make so much more work for the animation house, and I know exactly why they don't do that. But it's gone so fast, and I feel like there are a couple of moments where I wish they could have like sat in stuff. <laughs> For like a little bit longer, but I also feel like that there's a part of me that's a bit more biased because I'm so used to watching three hour streams. I think they've done a very good job with pacing it, but there's still a part of me that kind of wishes we could go, whoa, pump the brakes for like a second. <laughs> I beg of you, just just a minute longer and like a couple of I, I, I things I miss from, I mean, obviously the stream is still there to watch whatever. Yeah. Yeah. But some of the things I miss are like the campfire talks that we used to get so many of where people just like, you know, on watch will just have like little conversations with each other that are hugely big in character building and all that sort of stuff. And there's just not a whole lot of time for some of those bits and pieces, which, you know, I understand. But, you know, despite that, I think this is probably one of the best adaptations of anything. <laughs> I liked how everybody managed to get a properly, a proper solid hero moment this season. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm, they, they mm -hmm. I, I was very impressed with how they managed to battle because I mean there's seven of them what was the thing that you didn't like? it's nothing that I like actively didn't like there were a couple of things that didn't hit the way I had intended uh, that I thought would um, in, on the stream the echo tree everything to do with Vex and Sondor is probably the most creeped out by Matt I've ever been in my life Mm. It's just, it was it's something about the voice that he did and like the the way that he was like kind of he, he like it was so manipulative uh and like i remember just feeling kind of gross afterwards and like no it didn't hit the same way in this movie and i wonder i do wonder if it was because i had so much so many expectations for it but mm. i still think that they did a good job I, it's it's weird. It's not. I, I don't think they did anything poorly. It's just like something like, especially in that bit for me, didn't quite hit the way I wanted it to. But like, that's nobody's fault, you know. <laughs> Was there something you didn't like? <laughs> <laughs> um, it did feel a bit rushed. Mm. Uh, it's especially in like the middle part, which yeah. would have been like, I think the second three parts that you yeah. watched I would say that I was like I feel like we're rushing through this just you know to yeah. get through there it is, there is a sense of like you can I wish you'd slow down just a smidge like just yeah. a little bit yeah it, it, which was you know it's a bit like eh, okay but I feel like you could have just you know put a bit more like I like the fights I will start with this. I think the fights are great, but at the same time, I think they are such great characters that we would have needed those more like just peaceful moments. Hmm. They are still good, but they had so much potential to be more mm. than what they were. Like, for example, uh, Scanlan taking care of uh, Grog. They had that uh, tiny moment with Pike there where Pike is just admiring uh, Scanlan taking care of Grog and, and that went just like whoosh, okay out of the window <laughs> and I was like ah, wait bring it back that was, that was so good bring it's it back for like a second longer <laughs> I just appreciate a, just this for a little bit <laughs> just a tiny bit and then no so like moments like this because I, I think like especially now that I watched the campaign <laughs> we don't, I don't know if we mentioned this ever like I did actually watch it like watch it I listened to it while I was I was drawing, which is like the best way for me to do it. No, I think it's the best way for anybody to do it because I, I get because I've been watching since day one. Um, piece, little point of pride for me. Um, there's not many things I get to be a bit hipstery about, and this is like one of the only ones. That I'm like, sure. I was here before they even started streaming. <laughs> I was about when Liam was tweeting about his home games. 
<laughs> my question was going to be does it because yeah since we did this last time a year ago mm. you have watched the f- entirety of the first campaign yeah um does do you feel like it's hard for me to uh does it feel like it's coloring things for you now in the way it wasn't before maybe i don't know i didn't really think about it to be fair <laughs> i mean. i yeah, I I think what I what I thought about is that uh, is that what I said like you know now that I know how the campaign went mm-hmm. and obviously that's much longer mm-hmm. uh, uh, than these episodes I I I would definitely appreciate more time. Obviously, when I watched the first season, I watched it blindly, blindly like you know yeah. that was my first experience with the whole thing, uh, and I enjoyed it. Like I didn't have expectations. I didn't have anything really i just watched it and i was like oh okay yeah this is very good uh and then i got into it i got to know them through the campaign and i'm i'm now i'm where like you know i'm you... missing things a little bit yeah <laughs> no know? i understand entirely <laughs> all right well i mean we've talked about a couple of things that we 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 weren't you know yeah. maybe didn't hit quite as well let's talk about all the really good shit because there's a lot of really good shit now that you've watched the campaign, was there anything that you were looking forward to seeing this season? The things about Grog that we find out. Because I like Grog. Grog is just, you know, we like him. Yeah. I, Which is weird. Because I just said that, you know, we have more time in the campaign. Mm. But I think the whole Scanlan thing just hit me here a lot harder yeah once so you know i don't i try i'm trying i'm i think we should try and avoid we're not gonna spoil it try and avoid like stream spoilers as much as possible but yeah. there, there is so much set up for stuff to come i'm <laughs> particularly because i've been worried about that because i think in the first campaign you not campaign first season you don't get that much of scanlan i mean okay. the stuff you do it is you know it's fun and you get to know the the, the fun you know silly side of scanlan i was so impressed with just how well they managed to deepen him this mm-hmm. season. Everything with Kamal Jirori, that's it. Um, where, you know, he wounded him by singing him a love song about his last mate. And it was like, it's that was really so beautiful. emotional. It's so yeah. beautiful. When he was like, oh, I've got so much love in my life, but I, I, I'm, I'm missing something. And I'm sitting there like, there's a child of yours around the world that you will get to find very soon. For some reason, it feels like that I just connected with him much better here than in the campaign. I think I think that's I think that's the I think that's the Sam Regal effect. Um, there's something about Sam because I when I started watching the stream I didn't know who. I basically knew the top table, so that was yeah. the top table was was Travis, 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 <laughs> uh, Ashley, uh, Laura, and Liam. Yeah, I did that in the wrong order, but I think I did it backwards. Um, that was that was the top table, and I knew everybody there, and I didn't know the bottom table, so I didn't know Talz, and I didn't know Sam, and I didn't know Marisha, and I didn't I didn't get on with Sam much at the beginning because he's like Scanlan's very crude, um, mm-hmm. especially when you first meet him. Uh, he, there's a lot of, and I I'm not always the best with like particularly crude jokes. But there's something about Sam that really, he gets under your skin yeah. and suddenly you become very attached to him. Justice for Scanlan. Yeah, I love Scanlan. Further Scanlan stuff. Um, then uh, I was very excited to see Kaylee. Um, I thought that they translated the whole sequence <laughs> where he finds out that he, she's his daughter <laughs> very well. The the, uh, the way that they managed to like, the they, they managed to translate his speech so well, like like it just his like I didn't know you existed and maybe it's like narcissistic of me but because I know you're mine I love it means I maybe love you even more I'm sorry yeah. that I wasn't there and it really does mark this massive turning point for him and his character mm-hmm. um, in this massive piece of growth where it will be very exciting to see that come into fruition in the next season and I think we'll get to see even more depth to scan the short halt I did I mean I cr- there was multiple things I cried at in this season but Scanlan killing Umbrasil really got me <laughs> oh it, I, I cried so, I mean it was like they was they they really played with like him like really wanting to leave and I really appreciated also that they made the the fight with Umbrasil just fucking 
dirty. I'm I'm now a bit afraid because it's it's a common thing uh, that you know uh, if you make an enemy, especially like at the beginning, so powerful that it feels like that that there ain't no way you know to to win this and yeah. and whatnot. Uh, there's a bigger one at the end. There are many bigger ones. <laughs> there are many bigger ones, and I feel like like you know. How are you going to top that without sure. feeling but, like this, you know, it's it's too easy or easier than the first one I was? I think, yeah, the, the, the thing, I don't know how they're going to do the, the Vorigal fight, because that was, that was very specific. A lot of the stuff that they did in that was very specific to the campaign. Mm. So I really don't know how they're going to do that. Um, but I'm excited to see. I'm hoping maybe that the Vorigal fight ends up going like easier just because they've like learned from before. And then when they get to Thordak, they have like, you know, because the Thordak was, was huge because they had like allies. It wasn't just them. I think we should move mm. on to Grog. Grog was the reason I cried the most this season. Oh, that was unexpected. Because okay. <laughs> <laughs> we all know that the Vax is my guy. Yes. This is a known fact. We'll get, I think, I think we should leave Vax till last because there's a lot of Vax stuff to cover. But Grog, I think... Travis is again a bit sneaky in that I always forget how much I, I love him as an actor until he starts doing stuff <laughs> and then suddenly I'm like oh there's something about Grog as a character because he's so I mean he's so pure he's just he pure. is um he's a he's got a, a huge heart and mm -hmm. depth of love for everybody um and it is it is so unsullied by any sense of of like ego or anything like that he just loves it he's the whole family mm -hmm. um and i think there's something about i mean there's there's always something it, it's like that um that seinfeld meme where it's like, <laughs> it's like you're crying from uh legend of vox machina and it's like the it's the the all togetherness of, of family coming together to like help somebody and the fact that like that's where his strength comes from and i've just like can't stop crying <laughs> that whole sequence may be one of my favorite bits of adaptation in the season as well um yeah. i think they did a really good job with that fight i love that percy got his own little anime moment again there's a bit where he's like crouched on the roof and, and vex fires an arrow and it blows up behind him and he's got like the little like oh yeah, yeah, yeah. i was like ah oh, my anime boy's still an anime boy <laughs> something that they happens in the campaign that i think is a very smart decision to move away from is that everybody has died at least once in the campaign oh yeah <laughs> and it seems it's yeah, i see what they're going for it's not I mean, it, at a certain point if everybody dies a lot death stops becoming yeah, yeah such yeah. a big deal so yeah. obviously they took out some of the deaths mm -hmm. one of the main ones being grog trying to get rid of craven edge and craven edge killing him um which i actually think led to one of the more interesting changes that they made where they just like they you know breaking craven edge like sapped away all his strength and he had to be like carried and looked after and that's where he had the i mean that whole sequence is so good <laughs> i love so much at that i was like this is brilliant well done i like it but yeah the uh, uh i i liked the fact that that very much tied in thematically to him not knowing and understanding where his like strength comes from because he has mm -hmm. you have the whole fight at the beginning with earthbreaker from Groon, which i also loved it's also a really great bit in, in the campaign where you're watching Travis be like, I don't know what to do. Travis did a good job. I just, I, I'm very, so appreciative of how he managed to, was to give um, Grog so much depth and emotion. Mm -hmm. He has an intelligence of six. I love him. <laughs> <laughs> I loved him in the first season before watching the campaign. I still love him. I think he's great. Just the whole thing, like you know, I love that tiny moment, which is like really is just a tiny moment of like Scatlin freezing, and he's like, "Ah, I'm gonna carry you on my chest, <laughs> just strapping." I was like, "Ah, <laughs> I like moments like that." You know, I need more of those. <laughs> <laughs> little bits like that they're the good the yeah good stuff. it's it's really good so yeah i just love grog and i i i love that he got so much more to do in this season mm -hmm. than in the previous one i think because grog's one of those ones travis was never really like the forefront player for that mm. campaign 
which is fine and i don't think like he complained about it at all ever um but like the moments where we did have things that were like big grog stuff were, were like things like the kev dad mm. fight that was kind of huge for him um so I, I think it's because there wasn't that you kind of get used to grog being kind of almost a supporting yeah pillar that when he gets kind of put in the forefront and goes, here's his backstory, I'm like, oh, okay. She was put into the background, uh, it felt like, like, you know, especially because... Yeah, well, so, yeah, Percy, Percy had, Percy had his stuff last season. Yeah, yeah, basically. And, 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 and at some points I felt like that maybe they put him in the background a bit too much at points. Mm. Like, it, it's... It wasn't like, oh, you know, how dare you or anything. But I, I did notice that he was, like, just a bit shoved back then, like. Yeah, I guess. But, like, I think I think that's important for Percy as a character, generally speaking. Because mm. uh, Talos in, uh, in an interview was, like, this is basically Percy in, like, oh, I'm sorry, please trust me again mode. Um, yeah. Yeah, which is hilarious because um, <laughs> oh, Percy, I was I, I was both so looking forward to and absolutely terrified of watching the Sunken Tomb because I was like, I know Percy's gonna do something really fucking stupid and it's gonna have some <laughs> big ramifications for the rest of the campaign. Percy, I think a lot of Percy's stuff that I love this season comes from the stuff he got to do with both the twins. Oh yeah, yeah. Them. Um, for different reasons, but like, um, I also love that we get to see Percy being far more silly. <laughs> this is the thing about Percy; he he has some of the rawest one-liners known to man, but also he blushes at the top of the drop of a hat. Is actually so, he's so cringe. <laughs> he's such a cringy boy. Actually, I really loved uh, all the Percy stuff they managed to give uh, uh, with. Yeah, Vex in particular, because I've been really looking forward to that kind of blossoming. We all mm-hmm. know Percy and mm-hmm. Vex's love language is weapons and fighting people. <laughs> I, I was uh, cheering when we got Lady Vexalia, Baron Hester, the third house of Whitestone. And oh, yeah. Greyhound. Yeah, that was a good one. That uh, was a very good one. It's one of my favorite moments on the stream. Uh, and um, I was just I was just so happy to hear it. Uh, in full and that and and the conversation where he he goes um i've known many people with money and they are not worth you but liam was saying that one of his favorite things about um what happens in the sunken tomb is the way that their relationship between vax and percy kind of breaks down so that they could get to build up to this place of them being brothers again Mm -hmm. and i was i'm right there with him with that i was i was so excited to see all that sort of stuff i love those little teases of stuff that's to come with Ripley, mm-hmm. who's just sort of there, <laughs> and I just loved his, you know, planning. <laughs> like, you know, this is how we're gonna do so it, and, da, 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 da. and then <laughs> I think it was Grog who says, "Like, you have to dig a hole." That's not it. <laughs> you dig <laughs> like... a hole here. Oh <laughs> uh... uh, yeah. Look <laughs> no, no, no. at the trap and how it's. Oh, f- <laughs> <laughs> poor, poor Percy. He tried. So <laughs> Keyleth. Yes. Keyleth of the Arashari. Keyleth is still the most helpful member of Vox Machina. I'm really, really happy about the fact that we keep seeing more of that. <laughs> it is so gratifying to me, and I think I said this last time as well, it's so gratifying to me as somebody, obviously, who was watching the campaign as it was coming out back in the day. Mm-hmm. So there were so many people who were absolutely shitty as fuck about Keyleth. Because um, she's an incredibly... She's a very moral person. She was always the dissenting like party member when yeah. everybody was like well we should just kill everybody she's like okay hang on a fucking second <laughs> maybe we shouldn't just kill everybody and they're like oh kill the boy have to ruin all the fun that's what like a lot of the community stuff is like and that a lot of that it was put on to marisha as well which she never deserved to ever because marisha's the fucking coolest <laughs> and it's never okay and it's never okay and it's just fucking any time if i see anybody who's like well, i don't like killers i'm like I don't want to talk to you. That's <laughs> just like, straight up. I don't have any interest in hearing what you have to say. <laughs> Red flag. Um, like I can't do it. I, 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 I kind of refuse. Um, sorry. <laughs> um, uh, but uh, no, I'm not sorry. It's just I don't really. I don't care what justifications you have. Uh, I, I'm not hearing it. She's the best. And yes, her episode 
with the air and um Pyra doing that whole stuff where mm. she gets to it. They kind of combined her her obviously her trip to Pyra yeah for our RNT and then this um cuz obviously it's it's a lot of going back and forth that you can't really get to otherwise mm. um so it makes sense one of the things that it, it makes me sad that we don't get to see explored as much is that part of the reason Thordak ended up being able to escape or like yeah. or at least that she thinks is the right the reason is that she went in for her Aramente and they they see Thordak in the fire plane like yeah, very yeah, far yeah. off in the distance obviously the reason he actually got out was not to do with that mm-hmm. specifically and mm-hmm. there's this stuff uh, other stuff i don't think they've got i don't think they've gone into exactly how that happened yet in the show uh, it's very hard for me to <laughs> I, I don't think they did i don't think they've got it. So i shan't say but um uh it did mean we don't get that sense of keel of like honestly being crushed under the weight of like oh did i do this because that was big thing for keelith in the campaign it's like oh, i don't like um she she felt every decision she had to make um very very deeply which is mm. part of the reason she's a good leader you know she's she's that's part of the reason why she's so important to this group of people as well they need her to be that kind of bright spark one of the things i'm really hoping for next season is to see her rage keyleth and versus rashan in like just interpersonal stuff is very is some of the best marisha acting <laughs> from the campaign and i really want to get to see some of that just deep furious rage from her <laughs> later on but her going into the fire plane to like close the rift mm-hmm. tears anytime keila becomes like super powerful i'm just crying immediately <laughs> happened in the fir- it happened in the first season when she finally let off that sunlight spell i'm like crying <laughs> so i'm like it's like oh, she's so powerful <laughs> Um, yeah, I just, I'd love her desperately. And I, I did, yeah, it was, it was fast, but I did the moment where she got to be like, she got to, you know, embrace that fire and elemental form. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Wow. <laughs> no, it was like, it was very beautifully done, obviously still, but I, it definitely, that was the first time, uh, where I was like, this is where you can feel bad. This they is had TV to trunk series. it, yeah. They had to really uh, trunk uh, it some stuff. Yeah, yeah, and and then you know, in the campaign, obviously, it's much bigger. Yeah, I posted about this because I know this is what the thing I was going to talk about before. Um, the line "I have passed through fire" comes from a very different character in the campaign, and is is one of the most magical moments that happened on the campaign. Mm. Um, and I. I'm wondering, I'm, I really hope, because he's quite important to the stuff that ends up happening with Raishan, I really hope we get to meet Carrick. Because mm-hmm. Carrick is the one who sent her that letter, and I posted it on my Twitter, which was people picked up and were, were talking about and, and kind of yeah. reveling in a little bit, because it is, I mean, Carrick was, was played by Patrick Rothfuss. Uh, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Love, I yeah, know. yeah, I love it. Yeah, <laughs> and I reread that letter the other day. I think just before those episodes came out, and it is one of the most stunning pieces of writing. Um, it re- it gets me in the chest every time I think about it. It's the um, yeah, just the whole thing. I recommend finding that. Cl- I'll see if I can find a, a clip of it. Um, and yeah, put it in the description because it is um, it's so emotional. Um. And it was it was a really important moment for Kila specifically, and I appreciate that they gave that kind of tie to her mother. I hope this means that we still get to see Kerrig later, even if we don't get, like get it from. Because I mean, is he does something very he's he's quite important to how everything with Raishan plays out later on. Mm. Um, it's just the whole thing about her being having the heart of a gardener but having to be a hammer against the world, and I'm like, oh, Patrick. <laughs> How dare you write beautiful words? Because Patrick is great. Yeah, he's great. I will fucking read the Wise Man's Fear at some point. It's just <laughs> name of the... name of the wind just took me so long. Look, I told you it's you know it's you, a you... dense book. It is a dance book and you have to spend time with it. Mm-hmm. But I remember reading a Wise Man's Fear. Little side note, mm-hmm. and 
that was easier for me. Oh yeah. I don't know why, but like I was so interested in it. Like, you know, what's what's gonna happen? I just I just I finished I think I finished it within a week. Okay. Because I, I was like to it. I've been so bad yeah. at reading books recently. I'm currently oh. listening to the audiobook for Kith and Kin, which is the oh. the 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 novel of uh, about Vex and Bax. And it's mm. been it's oh, it just keeps getting me in the chest, man. It's like I'm getting a lot of vex and vax feelings. <laughs> like there's so many of them. Um, uh, it, it, Maria Nijkamp, uh, who wrote the, the the novel, managed to capture the two of them so well. And listening to the audiobook is great because Robbie Damon is a wonderful narrator. Plus, all of the dialogue is read by Liam and Laura, so I'm getting all the like actual vax and actual vex when they're like speaking. And I'm yeah. It is delightful. Some of the, 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 yeah. Oh, these are my favorite actors. I love these people. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I will quickly do a side note because mm-hmm. I had to look up the, I, Mia names. Mm-hmm. Uh, I was very thrilled that uh, Garbile was voiced by Billy Garmini. Boyd. Yes. Yes. Garmini. Garmini. Yes. Garmini sorry. Billy Boyd. Um, I love Billy Boyd. We've had He's my boy. Both, um, Dominic Mon- Monaghan. That's the one, Thank Dominic Monaghan. Yeah. yeah, Dominic yeah. Monaghan was obviously in the first season. Yeah. As Archibald? Yes. Thank you. I could. <laughs> so my friend Ace has been watching um, through the first campaign, so they've been telling me about their experiences. They kind of, at the moment, they're in the Briarwood arc, so they're kind of jumping back and forth between the show and the stream mm. um, to see how they kind of match each other. And the, I just, I keep getting messages like, Keeper Yenon's a man and Archibald's an old dude. <laughs> But yeah, it's nice. It's nice. it was so nice to to hear Billy. Now like, we just ah. need um the rest of the hobbits. So Elijah, Two more. Elijah, Sean. and and yeah, Peter. and maybe 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 Martin. Oh yeah, uh, I, I, that I, would be so nice. I can't. I don't know if I can see Martin being in this anywhere. I can in a way that would make sense. I just don't, not that like I think he would do a bad job. I just can't imagine him getting the thing and being like, "What is this?" <laughs> <laughs> I think Martin is just enjoys doing this stuff, even if he doesn't know, like you know, what is it about. And it's just like, okay, <laughs> fuck it, why not? Keyleth, one of my favorite. Uh, just real quick uh, before we move on to the twins, um, unless you have anything else you want to say about Keyleth, but one of my favorite things seeing was in the the fight in the tree with Sondor with the tree stuff. The way she turned into the elemental and did like tree stride through the trees coolest shit ever uh, she's just she's so cool <laughs> i literally i can't say anything more because i just love her like yeah she was my favorite in the first season and here as well i i remember being so worried when you then i'm not gonna thing. i was like yeah. you have to like keyless otherwise we're gonna have problems i love <laughs> Keyleth. I mean, yeah. So yeah. <laughs> yeah you know I, I think that was almost the first thing i mm. i texted you it was, I and I was right. so relieved. <laughs> Let's talk about the twins. Well, let's start with Vex. Well, if we're talking about Vex, we kind of have to talk about Sildor. Yeah. <laughs> and in that space, fuck Sildor, all of my homies <laughs> hate Sildor Bazaar. <laughs> Literally hate that man so fucking much. It's the worst in the campaign, but they've made him even worse. <laughs> it's the yeah. Thing. They've made him more deplorable. He's just this, like... He's awful. He's so awful. Big thing for Vex this season is that she died. Yes. Uh, I knew it was going to happen. I knew it was going to happen in that first three episodes because they released the titles and a lot of the titles for the episodes in the show are the same as the titles for the episodes mm. in the stream. Um, so when I saw The Sunken Tomb, I went, oh no. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> and I knew they were going to leave us on a cliffhanger and I knew it was going to, which is worse because they didn't even leave it in a cliffhanger in the on the stream. They they actually managed to resurrect her in the same episode. That was such a shock. Um mm. And it's such such a pivotal moment. It really is the moment where, like, kind of everything changed. Because, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. um, like, I mean, yeah, Percy just touched some armor, and then suddenly she was like flat dead. No servants of saving <laughs> throws. He uh, he did the thing that people tend to do, mm-hmm. <laughs> which is being stupid when you're in an the face. He did just he being did like, oh, let's. I'm just gonna touch this and uh, consequences. Uh, oh, consequences. <laughs> fun <laughs> i was like you but the thing is uh, that but then it, but they think it's why one of the reasons i like percy so much because he does that and he spends the entire season being like oh fuck oh fuck oh no 
<laughs> as you should. As but you that's should. That's part of the reason why Classy's wonderful. He's got, you know, yeah. he's he didn't do it on purpose, but like... of course he didn't. But like, you know, it's it's uh, never mind. We could get into this for like hours because it's like ah, always yeah, infuriates no, it, it, me. It, it is. Too... It was. It was. It was. A, it was just a moment where he was being rash, and I think it was just Talzin being a little bit rash as well. Um, but it it leads to such juicy shit. In relation, then we could talk a little bit about Zara and Cash, who came in, who are some of the most beloved NPC, not NPCs, guest players, um, with Wilfred L and Mary Elizabeth McGlynn. Mary Elizabeth, who is the voice director for the show as well, mm-hmm. and has been since the beginning, because she's uh, kind of a badass, uh, uh, an old industry hat at this sort of thing, and just is wonderful. I wasn't sure about the decision to make them a bit more antagonistic. Because by this point in the campaign, obviously they would have gone through all the Slayer's take stuff already, mm-hmm. so their relationship would have been friendlier. I understand that at this point they kind of don't really know each other and they made it that bit more antagonistic. I The one thing that didn't quite hit for me was her releasing that it's not a beholder because they can't use the term beholder because I'm pretty sure that belongs to Wizards of the Coast. Beholder-esque type creature on them was the kind of the only thing that made me kind of go because uh, uh, Dara and Vex's relationship is one of it's, it's, it's lovely they love each other um, mm. by the end but I believe that this means we get set up for when they come back because they come back multiple times um, yeah uh, as we go out throughout the campaign so it's uh, minded to be fair you didn't mind it yeah fair enough no. no I was like it made sense it does make sense I don't know it's just maybe, maybe there's just the part of me that's like I love Zara, and I love Zara's relationship with Vex, and I do appreciate that we kind of got we kind of got there at the end. So when we next meet them, maybe we'll get more of the stuff that probably um, we're used to. But um, Mm. I I just I just wanted to bring up uh, uh, (laughs) Cara's Zara and Cash. There Um, you go. Because um, Wilfred L also uh, is one of the funniest people in the world. Uh, Just some of the ways that he like delivers his lines um mm. right? like, you're very close to me that episode i was so prepared for the death i was not prepared for the flashbacks to them as kids it was the really interesting thing about the twins is they always v- vax just couldn't care less immediately mm. he was like i don't need to prove myself to you fuck you but vex you know, and he's right yeah and he is right but like vex you know it's still their dad and she always wanted him to care so, so used to the way that their relationship, both of their relationship is with their father. It took Sildor insulting Percy for her to be like, hey, fuck you. <laughs> fuck you. <laughs> Which was so gratifying. Yeah. No, what's that? What, what did fuck you mean? What's that? <laughs> and I was oh, like, Laura. they did such a good job with mm. playing into her, like, need to be one. I love that we got this, that we, we really got into this depth. To Vex, because I think she's very easy to write off as just being kind of mean. <laughs> Especially yeah. initially. And she's not, she's just, she has this sense of like needing to be independent in a sense. Even though she is the most codependent person <laughs> with her brother. The two yeah. of them are so codependent, but that's a whole other thing. Um, but like her, her big basis is like, I don't need anybody to protect me. I can do this on my own. And I mm-hmm. think a big part of that comes from the fact that really she just wants to be cared for mm-hmm. and loved desperately. Um, especially from like Sildor, um, who uh, I love the symbolism of her stabbing Sildor in the heart with the arrowhead that Percy made her. <laughs> Yay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I just, I love, I love, I love Vex. I love her always. And I think she's very cool. And now she has a broom. Yes. I that broom, broom is pretty cool. I love the broom. Be fair. I need um, a broom as well. I love broom. <laughs> <laughs> All right. What about the other twin? I mean, I, I've I've never been quiet about this. Vax has been my favorite since I started. Um, yes. Liam is my favorite actor. Like that's just it's true. straight up. I, it's true. Like I will watch Liam act just forever I, I love watching him come up with things and and uh, play with expressions because he's the one person that i think you can always watch on stream he's always acting 
he's it's like he's always he listens in character and he responds in character and all this sort of stuff and i just um, and it's fun for everybody else because they, they i mean he obviously enjoys the revelry and it, it plays a part of that as, as, in yeah, yeah, as yeah. Well. but getting to watch him is getting to watch whatever character he's playing exist in that moment and i love watching that i have a lot of feelings about the raven queen generally speaking i personally I just i mean for one thing I know we mentioned it at the top of the episode, but the design stuff around the Waving Queen that they've done absolutely fucks. It is so gorgeous. It's, I love all the iconography around her. I think I she's just she's. I mean, she's very goth. Um, yeah, <laughs> I love all of the stuff. I mean, she's. I just also think that she's a really interesting figure in mm-hmm. Exandrian lore. If you mm-hmm. don't know very much about it, I don't know how much they go into like the specifics of it. It because so much of this stuff just already exists in my brain. I don't know how much is like textual in in the um. But she is the goddess of death, but she's also the goddess of fate, and uh, she's often uh, associated with twilight and blood. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. These are, these are all uh, big things for her, and I just think that her whole thing is that she's an incredibly she's a neutral party, uh, because that is death. In a, in a sense, she is. You know, it's, it's, I'm realizing more and more in the you know in the past like I think probably a year or so just how much I have this like connection and appreciation of death <laughs> in the way that is explored in uh, narrative. I yeah. don't know what it is, but I just like the exploration of grief and stuff. I just think it's very. I know, it's something cathartic about it. I'm not sure, but I like her and the things that she represents. Um, because she's there as like a look you need to understand that death is not it's not a punishment nor is it a kindness it is just it just is and it comes for everybody and your job now as champion uh is to shepherd those who pass you know die in battle or or pass away and all that stuff you are to shepherd them to the other side and make sure that they get to where they're going because she abhors necromancy and all that sort of stuff like anything that perverts the passage of life and death she's very creepy <laughs> and the fact that she spends all of her time when you know vax basically sells his soul also take me instead you raven bitch is one of the most just one of the most iconic lines and oh uh, the way liam Li- liam uh you know love listening to and watching him perform so much is that he's he's so emotive Mm-hmm. Um, there's a there's a like a bit in the episode afterwards when they're doing the resurrection ritual where he like just yells like somebody do something and it is so heartbreaking. It is. <laughs> oh, and that moment changes everything for him. Pretty much until the end of the ca- no, until the end of the campaign. Let's just straight up. Uh, I was so thrilled when he uh, one shot at that behold or not beholder thing. Uh, by oh, yeah, yeah. that yeah. was the coolest shit in the world I love my boy he is so broken <laughs> when he has his wings out because he's fuck, he's just it's stupid so his wing speed is 60 feet around like when he, that, that, that's his flying speed when he uses haste with his boots because they obviously folded that into the armor in the season which makes sense I really appreciate that mm-hmm. um, when, he, when he uses his boots with haste speed is automatically doubled so whilst he's flying, he can already go, just on a movement, 120 feet and around. If he then uses his action to move, that's 240 feet. If he uses his hasted action to move, that's 360 feet. And then as a rogue, you can bonus action dash. So that's 480 feet around? Somebody did the maths? That's essentially, within the six second period, because that's how long a round is in D&D, 55 miles an hour. <laughs> I honestly don't know how to express the depth, the depth of my love for Vax. There's something very important about him for me. It has been since I kind of got attached to him when we started, I first started watching the stream. Uh, my favorite moment from the whole season is definitely when he has that talk with the Raven Queen and she talks about that and everything. That's like just peak uh, content right there. Yeah. Uh, also, I was kind of angry with him. I'm not gonna lie. He was an asshole for Scanlan, and I was like, no. Yeah, he was a bit. I was kind of surprised about that. Um, I was like, you can but... be an asshole. I mean, he can be. He's... He can be, but not to Scanlan. <laughs> leave Scanlan alone. Um, <laughs> I was like, leave him alone. <laughs> I did like 
the moment before they uh... enter the bot. <laughs> yes, let's <laughs> that bit, yeah. where he's like, uh, "I'm champion of the Rainbow Queen. I've just learned I'm a father. You win." <laughs> yes, that was a fun one. <laughs> but like, they also have one of my favorite. They they have like that really sweet talk where the, he's like, "Hey, he's like asking him for advice, basically," and Scandal like answers him honestly. And I think that's one of the first times he gets to like see him a little bit clearer for those who might not know on the outside of things sam and liam are they're they're like soulmates they are platonic best i'm not using i'm not mincing words they they are basically soulmates um those two people love each other desperately yeah um it's, it's so lovely <laughs> yeah. i i did i spent like a solid hour the other day watching that was like three compilations of like sam and liam moments um, and I watched all three of them, and it was a delight. It's just it's nice. They, there's two people who very, very much care for each other. So I appreciate that we got a couple more moments with the two of them getting to yes. interact. You're right. He was a dick to him, but um, yeah. and I didn't like that. No, I, I. You know what? Neither did I. But he's still my boy, and I love him desperately. <laughs> <laughs> so I would be the judgmental one. No, <laughs> no, I would be judgmental. Nice to I still him. love him. <laughs> <laughs> the two things don't cancel each other out. Um, <laughs> I, I, yeah, I really liked everything that they managed to do with the backs this season. I did find it very funny when he turned around and said, "There's no such thing as luck," and I'm like, "Are you sure about that, Mister Lucky Feet?" So, how would you rate this whole season? Do you have a number in mind? I have uh, eight. We'll give it an eight because I didn't like that they rushed things. Uh, I needed more quiet moments, but altogether, I liked it a lot more than I did season one. Mm. Uh, and, you know, there's always room to improve mm. uh, on stuff. And they already did with this season. And I think they will do more in the next one. Yeah. So I, I am keeping my ratings at an, at an eight for now. And then we shall see what the next season brings. I think that's fair. I think I gotta give it a nine. I think it, I don't think it takes that much off for me that they they kind of you know mm. went through things quite quickly. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. I think a nine is a very solid number. Okay. And there's so much stuff to come. I wonder how much we have to wait for it. Like, yeah, oh, is I it going to be, be in a year, year again? I think it will probably get it around the same time next year. Yeah, I think they're doing a very Which good job is... of kind of moving at that pace. Yeah. Uh, and then at some point we'll be getting a Mighty Nine animated series. Oh my god! <laughs> All right, then this was us talking about reviewing like should, the legend. Of... The, 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 there you go. There's, there's the, uh, you can't see... We didn't talk about Pike. Oh yeah, shit! <laughs> <laughs> I can't believe I've done this. I'm so sorry. <laughs> we left out Pike. Whoops. Sorry, Pike. Pike. Pike didn't really have like. I mean, to be fair, Pike stuff really was tied into Grog stuff. Yeah, like uh, you know, she didn't have anything. She sorted out her shit with Saren right now. She knows that she can be a cleric and swear. Um, yeah, yeah. So you know, I don't. She did kiss Scanlan at the end of the season. Oh, that was so. <gasps> Pikelin is coming real. <laughs> I was like, "Ooh, it's dead." <laughs> uh, I actually did. I think. I think um, it's really nice to see uh, Ashley get to kind of flex and be fun. Um, yeah. Uh, and it was because Pike obviously doesn't get to be in the campaign nearly as much because Ashley's off being in New York and doing blind yeah. spot things, and she would always come whenever she was able to. But like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I think it's nice that she just gets to exist in the narrative uh, and uh -huh. help out with stuff. And obviously, we got to meet Grandpa Wilhand, who's voiced by Henry Winkler. Yeah, incredible. That Jason was so casting. cute. Exactly. Um, all of her, her relationship with Grog is honestly one of the sweetest things in uh, the yeah. world. Yeah. Um. Yeah. I mean, I just love Pike, generally speaking. We love Pike. I love Pike. We love Pike. Uh, sorry. <laughs> there we go. I love Pike. I, I can't believe I did this. It's okay. It's okay. We, we remembered before stopping the recording. I was sitting there like, oh yeah, Pike's hiding. I was like, we didn't talk about Pike. <laughs> she is in there. She's like, we're annoying this. There she is. There, there, there she is. There she is. <laughs> Very Look. interesting to see a bunch of people who haven't watched the campaign be like, "Why has Pike got dark hair?" I'm like, "Oh, 
yeah, in the campaign, before they started the stream, she died. <laughs> Straight up, that was the first character that they, uh, they ever had when they were playing. Uh, and when she came back, her hair turned white. Yeah. Fun fact. Fun facts. I don't Katie. know if that's, like, text in the, <laughs> <laughs> in the canon of The Legend of Vox Machina, but that is the case. Uh, maybe she just Maybe she just goes, she went white early. There you, you know? go. There you go. Uh, but anyway, uh, this was us. Uh, we will be back next week as well, uh, reviewing uh, Ant Man and the Wasp, yes, the Quantumania uh, theme. So excited. <laughs> and um, uh, yeah, don't forget to subscribe, mm. push that notification bell. Uh, you are always uh, welcome to come talk to me about various critical role things on my Twitter or in the comments below. There you go. Um, yeah, and uh, you know, until then, take care. And we will see you next week. Also, we have a pretty great guest coming on in March. Just wink, wink. Mm, yeah, we do. Sorry, I'm trying yes. to do a thing. But it's very hard to do it backwards. Oh my god, what are you doing? <laughs> there we go. <laughs> I did it. This was, this was Katie's episode. <laughs> yeah. Look, I just... we did the Avatar thing in December. This one was for me. <laughs> I know, I know, I, you know, I don't mind at all. And that's why I was like, mm -hmm. <laughs> just nodding along. <laughs> all right, take care. We'll see you soon. Goodbye. Bye.